Hello, everyone. How you guys doing tonight? You know, this is, this is the day that the Lord has made. And, and this is, it's an awareness of God in your life. It, it's really easy to be aware of the problems in your life, the difficulties, the obstacles, or the sickness, or the people that hurt you this week or the financial problems, it's easy to be aware of that because you're seeing everything with your physical eyes. But, I, but I've learned this, that nothing changes in the physical realm until it changes in the mental and spiritual realm. You're, you're, so we have to like, there's times that you have to just say something to change the situation, change your perspectives. Your words can change your attitude, they can change your emotions. How many know words have power, right? So when we say this is a day that the Lord has made, this is what I say. Then I will rejoice and be glad in it. What he's saying is that this day is going to have some blessings. This day is going to have some breakthroughs. It might have some trials, but God's going to work it all out for my good. And instead of looking for more devils and more problems, there's a time in your life that you need to start looking for a blessing. Because if you'll just acknowledge that God is in your day, you'll start getting ideas. You'll start getting wisdom. You'll start getting dreams. You'll start getting vision. Let's give some praise that God is in this moment right now. He's in this day. He's in this night. And anything's possible today. I want to thank every one of you again for even giving towards our Pomona campus. Uh, we, of course, got the down payment. We are getting ready to get that building ready for our grand opening. We're talking about grand openings. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, Pomona does that. Pomona has hope now. There's a, a live church in Pomona that's ready to open up. Thank you for your sacrifice. In a couple weeks, I'm going to be going to Uganda. We have a team that's going over there. I'm going to meet up with 60-something new pastors that I've never met. Um, by the time we're done, they're going to be 60-something Way World Outreach pastors in Uganda with 60 different churches. Let's give the Lord a hand. 63 different churches. You know what that means? That we're getting more growth, come on, in one year or in six months that we had. Come on, in 19 years of ministry. And we're believing... 60 churches can reach the whole Uganda. How many believe that? So we're going to be touching that territory. I've been gone for the last two weeks. I've been actually visiting a campus in La Puente. Uh, we're working on maybe merging a, a church with our church in La Puente because our La Puente campus, our kids, our children are outside in the heat. There's no children's room for children's ministry so right now we're praying that God opens up this campus. We're praying that the favor of God and the, and the come on, that we, just, that we just get an agreement. And how many believe that God wants those children in a, Sunday, in a class? So we're almost there. But thank you guys for everything that you do. We are an amazing church as we work together. If this is your first time here, I, I want to let you know what God is all about. And we're going to be talking about this subject today. I, I seen a... I, a, a article or a statement on Elon Musk, and, and I read it this morning, and he said that he realized this, that, this is what he first said, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be me. And what he was saying is, you wouldn't like it. He's the richest man in the world, and what he's saying, if you were him, you would not be happy being him. And then he began to talk about how most people portray this happy life, but they're really miserable. And he was saying, it looks like I got everything, but I'm not really that happy. But this is something that he said that was very unique. And it's, it just shows me that he's real close to finding Jesus. And he said this, I found out the real meaning of life. And the real meaning of life is to love one another. And if he, he doesn't understand this, that God is love. He's just one one thought away from having an encounter with a God that is a God of love. So tonight, we're going to be talking about love. And, and, and John, John actually spent a lot of time with Jesus Christ. And, and, and John the Beloved talks a lot about love. There's no apostle that talks more about love than John. 
And, and it's proof, the love of God in us is proof that we have a relationship with God. So we're going to ask a question today, and I want us to be really honest. And this is a question, are you a real believer? That, now, I'm not asking that to put doubt in your mind. I'm asking that so you're not tricking yourself. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you think you're a believer, a real believer, because you know the Bible. You think you're really mature because you could quote a few scriptures. You think you're a real believer because you're really religious and disciplined. But the proof that you're really a believer is not none of that. The level of love you walk in is the proof that you're a real believer. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit tonight. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Speak to us tonight through your word. We're so grateful, Father, for your presence being here. You've given us your word. This, light, this word can change our lives forever. We give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your daily growth book, this would be today's reading. And it's 1 John chapter 3, verse 15 we'll be covering today. So being a real Christian is more than saying, I'm a Christian. Being a real Christian is more than having a Christian sticker on your car or, we- or wearing a Christian T-shirt. There are, in fact, some who claim to be Christians and are not and are even in this church tonight. How can we know if we are one of these? John's reply has been constant and simple. John is the one that wrote the First, book, first John chapter 3, and he says, if, and this is what he talks about, if we believe in what the Bible teaches as true, if we show the love of Jesus to others, and if our conduct has been changed and is becoming more like Jesus, then our claim to be a Christian can be proven true. The idea is, can our claim to be a Christian be proven we're in 1 John chapter 3. We're going to cover three proofs or three proofs that we are real believers. And let's start with 1 John chapter 3 verse 11. This is the message that you've heard from the, begin, from the beginning. We should love one another. Let's continue reading the whole thing. We must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil. And his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters, we are believers. It proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. That is some deep stuff. So let's look at the scripture. What is the proof that we are real believers? Number one, real believers obey Jesus' command to love one another. Jesus was the one who taught this message or gave this command to love one another. In John 13, 34 says, so Jesus said, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Say it with me, commandment. Love each other. Now when God gives us a command, it's not an option for us to love each other. We love our brothers and sisters in the Lord. You don't have an option to hate one of your brothers and sisters of the Lord. Because Jesus is saying, I command you to love one another. Look what he says. Just as I have loved you. So now he qualifies it. I don't want you to love yourself, love each other the way your mama loved you. I don't want you to love each other the way even a brother or sister in the church loved you. But I want you to love one another the way I loved you. And you know what that means? That God loved us and Jesus loved us while we still were sinners. 
God is saying stop loving people based on the value they could bring your life and just stop, start loving people the way I love them. I love them with their mess. I love them with their faults. I love them with their attitude. Now, I don't love their attitude, but I love, come on, I love them, I love them while they're doing wrong. I love them when they turn their back on me. But especially, God wants to say this, we got to love one another here. So you go, Jesus goes on to say, so love the way I love you. You should love each other. Verse 35, by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is how Jesus is saying people will know that we're true followers of Jesus Christ. And that's our love for one another. Is there someone in the church, a brother or sister, that you can't stand? Is there somebody that if they died, you'd be okay with that? Because the scripture is saying that if, if, you, if you don't love someone and you're loveless towards them, you're okay if they die. There's some of us right now, we need to do a heart check. Because you're calling yourself a Christian but you got too much hate in your heart. Now understand this, this is not to point fingers, this is just to get right. Because hate can sneak in very easily. And we could trick ourselves into thinking, I really don't hate him, I just don't care about him. That's hate. Let's talk about what love is in a minute. She says, love each other, agapao, love each other, it's a Greek word. It means to love the love of Christians towards one another. That's what it first means. So agapa, it says agapa, it's a Greek word. Jesus would say this, agapa o each other. It, this is what it means. Lo, the love of Christians towards one another. This is how they'll know that you're a real believer. This is how they'll know my, my spirit lives in you. They'll know it by one thing. It won't be by your talk, it'll be by your love. Man, then people love each other even though they got faults like us. Then people are still united. They should, be, they should have gave up on each other, but we're not giving up on each other because Jesus never gave up on us. Don't be a hypocrite and receive the love of Jesus and not give it to somebody else. How many breaks have God, has God given you? Thank God that he's not like the devil that's an accuser of the brethren that brings up every single fault that you have. You know what God does? He covers a up a lot of things because he's trying to get you a blessing. He just says, okay, baby, we're going to get through this. It's okay. Just repent of it. It's okay. We can overcome this. Let it go. I have a dream for you. I have a call on your life. How many know that God still has a call on your life even when you're not acting right? How many believe that we need to start loving like Jesus? So it also means the love which Jesus gave. Agapao means the love that Jesus gave and showed the apostles by washing their feet. So this kind of love is, is practical and it actually is a love that serves one another. When we, when we really love people, not only... Not only do we say we love them, but we show we love them. And we show we love them by finding their needs and serving them. See, love is a very humble word. To really love people, you have to become a servant. Prideful people aren't loving people. Prideful people just love themselves. How do you know you're prideful? You get your emotions hurt really easy. See, when you're, when you're loving, you can't even notice when people are doing you wrong because love covers a multitude of sins. You're so interested in serving the people and serving the community, you're not expecting nothing. What you're there, the expectations are on you. I'm here to wash some feet. Maybe we need to have a feet washing ceremony and bring that back to 2023 so we can get back to understanding what real love is. And maybe I should ask you who you don't like and make you wash their feet. Don't make, see somebody, just somebody, it just came to someone's mind right now. Oh, please don't make me wash their feet. I'll punch them. 
But there's somebody right now, God is saying, you need to learn how to love and serve your brothers and sisters, especially the ones that have been getting on your nerves. Now understand, Jesus didn't wash their feet because they were good boys. A chapter later, they will all deny him. Peter would cuss and say, I don't know the blankety blank guy. What? A few chapters later, Peter would actually cut someone's ear off, and Jesus didn't teach him that. A few chapters later, one of his disciples would kiss him and betray him. They would all deny him. They would all turn their backs on him. And he knows what they're going to do because he prophesied it and he's still washing their feet. You see, because God's love is not motivated by your behavior. It's motivated by his character. Come on, does anybody have the love of Jesus in them? And if you have the spirit of God, the proof that you have the spirit of God is that you're loving now understand, anyone could love somebody that's lovable because everybody loves a puppy. Everyone loves a cute little baby, most of us, unless we're really hateful. I hate babies. There's something wrong with you. Right? It's easy to love a grandma that's sweet that just bake you cookies. Oh, how cute. But it's difficult to love a brother or a sister that's in transition. A brother or sister that's still, come on, influenced by a spirit. A brother, see, we got to be careful that we're not treating people like the spirits that they're dealing with. And I, what we're doing is attaching a spirit on a person instead of rebuking the spirit and praying for that person, interceding for that person, and let them know I still believe in you. Come on, is there anybody more mature than your circumstance and you treat people the way you want to be treated, you don't treat them the way they treat you. You're never mature if they hit you and you hit them back. But why'd you cuss them out? They cuss, me, they cuss on me. That's what they get. Now, this is, let's, let's keep on reading. It's getting, it's, I know it's getting a little quiet and touchy here because we're dealing with a real subject. Now understand, loving one another was not a suggestion, it was a command of Jesus. And he's saying the proof that you are my disciples, they'll know that you're my disciples, is the love that you have for one another. Isn't that interesting? So let's go into the second proof. We must not be like Cain. Say it with me. We must not be like Cain. Real believers are not like Cain, and, and we're going to find out what that is. We must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been go doing what was evil, and his brother had, was, had been doing what was righteous. Interesting. The scripture says, don't be like Cain. And actually, the word means... Absolutely, never ever be like Cain. We should become more like Jesus, not more like Cain that killed his brother. See, some of you guys aren't murderers and murderers in the sense of you're actually pulling out an AK or, or thinking about stabbing someone tonight, but you're murderers with your tongue. Murder is in your heart. And because murder is in, was in Cain's heart, this was the problem. He belonged to the one that's a murderer, the evil one, the devil. You cannot have hate in your heart for a brother and sister without having an accompanying, accompanying demon with it. Some of you are in spiritual warfare, and it's more than spiritual warfare. You have demons that you've let in your life because you have hate in your heart, and you didn't know. You didn't even know you hated them. All right. 
Are we still here? We're just trying to help somebody. So look at this. Cain belonged to the evil one. That's crazy. Imagine tonight there's only two categories because this is true. There are those here in this room that call themselves believers and Christians, but you belong to the evil one. You actually belong to the devil. And he took ownership when you let unforgiveness, bitterness, and a, gr a grudge and hate to develop in your heart. Love, 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 love. Someone say love. love. See, when we love each other, we build each other. We don't kill each other. You know, someone thinks, I love God and I love the church. One of the keys to love, I just want to continue that definition, is to be unwilling to abandon it or do without it. You know what that means? When you love your brothers and sisters, you love being in fellowship with them. When you love your brothers and sisters and you love, this is what happens, you love the church. You don't speak evil of the church, you speak life over the church. You start saying this, I love my church. See, when, when you have the God's love in your life, you don't have to be talked into church. You can't stay away from it. When you love the club, you can't stay away from the club. When you love the weed, you can't stay away from the weed. When you love the alcohol, you can't stay away from the alcohol. But when you love God, you love his church, and you can't stay away from the church, they'll try to push you away. Your body will tell you no, but somehow you'll still get in the car, tired and wore out, and come on a Wednesday night and begin to worship God because you have the love of God for your brothers and sisters, and you're saying you can not keep me away from my family. My family gives me life. Come on, does anybody love the church? We don't kill our brothers and sisters. We love our brothers and sisters. Some of us are prophetic killers. You think you're a prophet, but you are, as a matter of fact, you are a prophet. You're a demonic prophet. But the only thing is you say in the name of the Lord, but your words are harsh. Your words are killing. Your words are discouraging. Your words are destroying faith. Your words are causing division because you have a spirit of Cain on you. See, when you have a spirit of Cain on you, there's a problem. You belong to the evil one. And when you belong to the evil one, who you belong to, you become like. When you belong to the devil, this is what happens. You think like him. You talk like him. You have his emotions. You guys get this? You're dirty like him. And you get his results. Someone's going to get liberated tonight because you actually thought you belonged to the Lord, but you've been living like you belong to Satan. And because you've been living like you belong to Satan, you've been feeling satanic emotions, sat satanic anger, and God's ready to deliver you tonight and saying, God, God is saying, I've called you out from darkness. I've, ca I've called you to feel, I feel, I'm filling your heart with love so you can love your mama, you can love yourself, you can love your enemies. Come on, the only one that you don't love is the devil. So Cain belonged to the devil. Don't be like Cain. Don't belong to the devil. He belonged to the evil one. And that word is, it's a Greek word, poneros, perneos, and it means the evil one himself, the devil. He belonged to the one that was full of bad, is full of bad, the one that causes pain, hurt, and trouble. That's, that's the evil one. The annoyer, the, the, the diseased one, the blind, the one that causes blindness and hardship 
the one that has malice in his heart, the one who harasses, the one who is lewd in his sin, the one that harms, the one that causes calamity, the wicked one, the guilty one. And this is what's happening. When we belong to him, we start taking on his attributes. Instead of encouraging people, we're hurting people. Amen? Come on. Well, I'm just telling the truth. Stop hiding behind your saying you're telling the truth and killing everybody around you. The Bible says tell the truth in love. There's still a way to tell truth. You don't tell truth and take a scripture and kill people with it. Let me give them the scripture. Stab them. You don't use scriptures to stab people. You lose scripture to build people. You, use, you stab the devil with scripture. Come on. You attack him with scripture. You don't attack your brothers and sisters with scripture to hurt them. All right. Okay. So now, Cain belonged to the evil one. Because he chose to be ruled and controlled by sin. When he refused to repent of his sins and do what was right. We can choose our Lord and we can choose who we belong to. You could choose what team you're on. But there's only two teams. You either belong to the devil, the evil one. And you'll start seeing the attributes of the disease and the harm and the anger. It'll come out of your mouth. You'll be hurting everyone. Decrease all around you, not increase, not prosperity. Because the evil one always is going to harm you and harm others through you. Or you could belong to the Lord. And when you belong to the Lord, you become more like him. When you belong to the Lord, come on, you're being trained. When you belong to the Lord, this is what happens. You start walking in his love because the first thing that God does when, he, when you're saved is give you the gift of the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with his love. God is not commanding us to love without preparing us and filling us with the love to do it. But you can make a choice. You could take this word and say, I don't care. I'm not listening to anything he says. As a matter of fact, I'm offended because I feel like he's talking to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know like you're weak. I don't know the, the argument you had in your car right now. I don't know. Your wife didn't call me. I don't know the bad attitude that you have at home and how you're cussing everybody out, using F words all over the place, and then you come in here saying you're a Christian. I don't know that, but God knows it. And the purpose of the scripture, there must have been a lot of people in John's day that were claiming to be Christians, but they had no love. And he was, he was here to tell them, you claim, came to, you claim to be a Christian, but actually you're not like Jesus. You have the spirit of Cain on you. Look what happened when, when God himself spoke to Cain. Say it with me, God himself. Now, Cain got in trouble with God because he wanted to do his will above God's will. So God gave Cain a command, and he refused to obey the command. But God is so loving that he goes to Cain like he comes to everyone, every single one of us. Just think about that. The God that created the heavens and the earth is concerned about you. That he would live us, leave us his word so we could begin to experience the fullness of life that he has for us. So this is what happens. Cain does whatever he wants. And in, in Genesis 4, 6, let's look at the conversation that God is having with Cain. And then this is what God tells Cain. Cain, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Understand this. Anger that you don't deal with will eventually control you. And turn into hate. Anger is the seed of hate. Anger will cause you not to forgive people. And when you don't forgive people, you're letting anger control you. And when you let anger control you, there's another thing and another spirit that's going to control you. And it's the spirit of the devil. You cannot hold on to anger and unforgiveness without attracting a demon from hell to fortify the position in your life. Wow. 
Why do you look so de dejected like you're, come on. You will be accepted, Cain, if you just do what's right. I told you what you need to do, just do it. It's going to be good. I'm not rejecting you. This is what I'm saying. I want you. I want to accept you. I, I love you. I just need you to repent or turn away from your sin that I command you to not to do, and you're doing it anyways. If you'll just stop doing it, let go of your anger, forgive, and do what I told you, and you'll be accepted. I'm not talking to you to condemn you. I'm talking to you to restore you. You have to clear out the devil in your mind that where you're in church, you hear a voice that people are judging you. God is not judging you. He loves you and he's coming to you to restore your life, restore your joy, restore your peace, restore, come on, his relationship with you. It's not that you came to him. He came to you. So now... God's coming to, coming to stubborn, rebellious Cain. He goes, just do what's right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be his master. What he was saying is, Cain, understand this. Just do what's right. But if you don't do what's right, you're choosing for sin and the devil to own you. You cannot make decisions in agreement with hell without giving authority, giving your authority, giving hell authority to rule over your thoughts, your emotions, your decisions. I'm telling you, it turns into bondage. We're, uh, this is what's happening. A lot of us are playing with, playing with the spiritual realm. And you think it's no joke, the things that we're saying, the things that we're doing, the, the, the attitudes that we have. And we're, we're playing and we think, well, I got control. And God says, no, you don't have control because the moment I... The moment I brought it up and the moment you rejected me, this is what you did. You chose to reject me as Lord and you chose sin to rule over you and demons to rule over you. You and your family. Don't be like Cain. You know what Cain did? Cain just ignored God. Cain hated his brother. And kill them. Imagine having a counseling session with God. And after the counseling session, you do completely the opposite. And then you go ahead and kill your brother. You know how many counseling sessions I have with believers that don't listen? Why come into counseling if you're still going to do what you want? Well, they didn't help me. They, they helped you. You just don't listen. I don't feel like I'm being fed. No, you're being fed. You ain't chewing the meat. Come on. You're not chewing the food. You're not obeying what God's telling you. You're not repenting of your sin. And God is saying, until you do that, I won't accept you. You ain't quiet up in here. Cain hated his brother. Now, when you love the church, I'm telling you, you can't stay away from it. If you can stay away from church, if you're watching online and you haven't attended church for months after months after months, I'm telling you, and it's not because you're sick. It's just you don't like being around God's people. You got to check yourself if you're even a believer. Why? Because I'll, I'll tell you why. Because God's spirit is in believers. And if you don't like being in the church, you don't like being around God's spirit. You like ruling your old life, you got a spirit of Cain on you. And it begins to, uh, uh, it begins to, uh, it begins to take over your opinion of the church. Some of people right now you're watching and you have a negative opinion about the church. And the church did nothing bad to you. 
But there's a spirit in you that's keeping you away from brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm telling you, it's a spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain doesn't love brothers and sisters in the Lord. And the spirit of Cain doesn't love righteousness. When you have the spirit of Cain on you, you hate brothers and sisters. And you can tell you hate them because your mouth is full of it. I didn't say a bad word there. Full of what? Full of hate. Nothing positive about the church. You can't say nothing positive about your brothers and sisters. Can't you see that people are getting saved every day here? Can't you see that people are being discipled? Can't you see that the hungry are being fed? Can't you see that people are being taken off the street? All I see is the faults. You're kind of like the devil. That's all he sees as faults. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. I want to let you know, don't allow Satan to accuse brothers and sisters through your mouth. Understand, this is today's reading a growth book. I didn't make it up because you're here. <laughs> hate. That word hate in the Greek means, it's, it's, it's pronounced miseo, or actually in, the, in, in miseo. And it means to pursue someone with intent to harm them. You don't have, you're not pursuing them to bless them. You're pursuing them to harm them. You can't stop thinking about them. But your thoughts aren't good for them. Your thoughts are to harm them. Eliminate them. Go on Facebook and talk about them. Wait till I see them. I'm going to give them a piece, un pedazo de mi mente. Because you, so, some of us have turned into bilingual haters. You could hate them in English, Spanish, and Braille. Imagine that you're blind and you hate people. How do you express that? Give me some braille over here. We're going. Right? And the idea is I want you to understand some of you guys imagine that you could see, but you're blind. Blinded by your hate. Come on. I could see. I got vision. I know the word, but you're blinded by your hate. Okay, we're still on. Trying to talk about Cain. Don't be like Cain. Hate. You know what hate means? A desire to do persecute and do harm to people. It means to be loveless. It means to feel and express nothing more than interest in. How interesting that to just be interested in something is actually the definition of hate. I'm just interested in God. And God's saying, that's hate. God doesn't want you interested in him and interested in your brothers and sisters. He wants you passionate about them. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, God's all in on us. It means to also hate me to treat as of little importance, unimportant. So you're actually practicing hate when you treat people like they're nothing. It means to treat with indifference. That's hate. And I think the highest form of hate I have no emotions towards you. I don't care. So some of you guys, well, I don't hate them. I just don't care for them. And God is saying that's the highest form of hate. You could care less about them. I don't care. I don't care your condition. I just don't care. You probably deserve it, dummy. Some of us, I'm telling you, we got to watch our hearts because people go through tough times and you like saying, that's what they get. I seen that coming. I told you that was going to happen. Well, it's not that you're a prophet. You speak negative about everybody. <laughs> to hate is to ignore people. Disregard, okay. Number three. Real believers are, fu are full of the love of God. Say it with me. Real believers are full of the... So they're not like Cain. They don't practice sin. They don't reject God. Their hearts aren't full of hate. But real believers are full of the love of God. In verse 14 it says, if we love our brothers and sisters, 
who are believers, it proves. Bro love our brothers and sisters who are believers. Be careful with this because don't twist the scripture and then put someone in the category of a non-believer so you can hate them. I really don't think they're believers anyways. Well, I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you what needs to happen here. Even love your enemies. So God doesn't give you any excuses. You love especially your brothers and sisters in the Lord. But if, you know, I don't think they're brothers and sisters. Well, then love your enemies. All right. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, who are in the men's home, who are in the women's home, who are in your ministry, who are in your DG, who are in your own house, it proves that we have passed from death to life. It proves that we're saved. See, the proof that you're saved, you used to be dead. That, you know what that means? You used to be separated from God. You, used to, you didn't know God. But there was something that happened. You call upon the name of Jesus. And then God, through faith in Jesus, through the work on the cross, he translates you from darkness he takes you out of that death life and he transfers you to the kingdom of heaven and then he fills you with his spirit and now you have a relationship with God. Your heart's full of love. You are born again and we know you're born again because your heart is now full of love. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. The proof that we are real believers is our love for one another. In 1 John 4, 7, it says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. So we should not only start loving each other. It's kind of easy to start loving each other when you're new in the church. Because you don't know nobody. But then you start knowing people and you start realizing, wait a second, this church has issues too. But not only does a church have issues, the truth is you got issues. And that's why the Bible says, because of your love, make an allowance for each other's faults. It does not say you are not Inspector Crusoe if you just figured out someone has faults. And you don't have the spirit of discernment if you're finding everybody's faults in the church. You got a spirit of criticism and accusation which is demonic. All right, here we go. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that the murderers don't have eternal life. So now, in 1 John 4, 7, it says, let us continue to love one another for love comes from. Where does love come from? Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. How do we know you're a child of God and you know God is that you love one another. Your heart's full of love. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. That means if you don't love and hate is in your heart, there's only, there's only one problem. You just don't know God yet. There's a lot of religious people think they know God, but they don't know God. They know rules. They know scripture. They know Christian protocol. They know all the right words to say in church. God bless you, brother. How are you doing? Blessed and highly favored, my brother. How are you doing? Too blessed to be stressed. You know all the Christian saints. You know all the Christian singers. You know all the worshipers. You go to all the concerts, but your heart is still full of hate. And you could tell by the words and the feelings that you have towards your brothers and sisters. I can't stand them. But God goes in the scripture even deeper. He's saying that hate is not just, it's not, it's not as, as innocent as you think. He's saying 
if you hate a brother and sister in the church, in the Lord, you're in the category of a murderer. Because murder is in your heart. There was a quote by Spurgeon. He says, every man who hates another has the venom of murder in his veins. He may never actually take the deadly weapons into his hand and destroy life. But if he wishes that his brother were out of the way, if he would be glad if no such person existed, that feeling amounts to murder in the judgment of God. And let's finish with the good news. Because someone needs to repent. How many know we all need to repent? You're like, we need to like, do it. let's take a look at this. God, from here on out, you know this. God will never give you the option to not love your brothers and sisters in the Lord. God will never give you an option to not love the church. God will never give you an option to not serve one another and wash the dirt off each other's feet. That's what washing is. There's dirt. There's sin. There's faults. That's why you're washing feet. And this is what should be happening. You wash my feet, I wash your feet. That's so embarrassing. There's a lot of ego and pride that doesn't allow us to love. We got to pray for God to fill our hearts again with love. And this is it. The good news. The moment we are saved and call on Jesus to save us, God gives us something. The gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift of the Holy Spirit removes the hate and fills our hearts with his love. In Romans 5.5 5, it says this, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know, say we know how dearly God loves us. Do you know how much God loves you? He loved you so much that, and he loved me so much, that while I was still a sinner, wanting nothing to do with him, doing my thing, rejecting him, he came to this earth looking for me and looking for you. And not only is he looking for us, he lived a righteous, perfect life. We spit on him. We rejected him. We put nails in his hands, put him on a cross half naked to die for our sins, the innocent for the guilty. And at the end, he says, it is finished. I've done everything that I could to show them how much I love them. So they'll never doubt it ever again. And then he says this, now what I want you to do is love each other the same way I loved you. Have you loved someone to the point of crucifixion yet? So I really love them, but all they did was look at you funny and you're already done with them. Some of us leave this room and you have a little traffic in our parking lot. And you're like wanting to flip people off. But then you remember, I'm in church. But your heart is still jacked up. How many know that you're going to be tested when you go home to love the people in your own house? Oh, Lord. If we know the Holy Spirit, look, he's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us what? To fill our hearts with his love. You know what he's saying? You have no excuse. Because I'm not just telling you you love like me. I'm giving you my spirit so you can love like me. I'm going to empower you to love. So how do you know you're a true believer? Your heart is full of love. And this is the idea. We're here tonight. But it's a time to examine our hearts. Don't be like Cain. Then when God has a meeting with you. And he shares his word with you. And he wants to reconcile with you. And he wants to take the anger out of your heart, the bitterness out of your heart, the misery out of your heart, the depression out of your heart, the rejection out of your heart. Don't be like Cain and ignore him and continue going forward. God is not here to judge us. He's here to restore us. But if you're saying, Pastor, man, I need, I need this word. I realize that I've been going through the motions, but I'm done with that. It's time for you to forgive those people that have hurt you. Receive forgiveness and give some forgiveness today.
Today, someone's going to set, be set free from the spirit of Cain and the spirit of hate and the spirit of bondage to sin. Does anybody want to get set free today? Let's all stand up. It's just a meeting tonight. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. It's just a meeting tonight. Go, going over a few scriptures that John mentioned. And we're saying, man, this is so relevant for 2023 because over 2,000 years ago, the same thing was happening in the church. There was a lot of religious people that claimed to be true believers, but they didn't like each other. They hated each other. They were bitter with one another. They couldn't stand each other. And he was saying, hey, guys, remember from the beginning the message that Jesus gave us to love one another? Understand, if we don't love each other, this is what he's saying, it proves that you don't know God. But if today you're saying, Pastor, I, I want to make sure that I'm right with God. And you know what's so wonderful? God will not only forgive you, he'll cleanse you. And then he'll fill your heart. And from here on out, you could say, I'm not, a love, I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover. And from here on out, I love everybody. Truly in my heart, I could say today, there's nobody I hate in this world. I hate the devil. But I don't hate nobody else. And I'll tell you, and this is what happens. The more I'm aware of my own faults, the more mercy I have with everybody else. I realize people do things because they don't know better. People do things because they're struggling. People do things because they haven't matured enough. But I want to kind of get to the core of why they do it instead of judging them. I go, let's just find out why you're angry. Who do you need to forgive? Who hurts you? I know you're hurt. Let's heal you up with the love of Jesus. Let's fill your heart with God's love. And now when you're healed and you're whole and you have a heart full of love, then we can start loving ourselves and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. How many know it's a good life? The love life is the best life of all. Okay, so now you're saying, Pastor, I'm going to make two calls. Number one, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be forgiven, they'll be set free, and they'll become a brand new person. This is what's amazing. You're not joining a religion. You're entering in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Elon Musk, he goes, it's all about loving one another. And I'll say, Elon Musk, you're 100% right. We, we cannot love each other the way we're supposed to love each other without God. God is love. The proof is our love. And if your love needs to grow, just say, God, I want my love to grow tonight. If you need to forgive someone, if you want forgiveness tonight, tonight's your night. And I'm going to ask you in just a second to come forward if you're ready to let it go. And we're believing that right here, of course, God's not judging you. He's here to help you, restore you. How many are ready to let, flush the anger out, flush the hurt out, Flush the misery out. Flush it all out. And then God, let God fill you with his love tonight. I know they hurt you. I'm not, I'm not saying that they hurt you. And forgiving them is not weakness. Forgiving them is a choice so you can receive the love of Jesus tonight. But if you're in this room, say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God. But I want to be saved tonight. I want to be born again. I want to receive the gift of eternal life. You can pass from death to life. From hell to to heaven, from belonging to the devil to belonging to Jesus. You're saying in this room, I'm not sure I belong to Jesus quite yet. I hope I belong to Jesus. Why not make sure that you belong to Jesus by giving your life to him today? For those that say, Pastor, I don't know if I belong to Jesus. I know Cain belonged to the evil one. I want to make sure I don't belong to the evil one. I want to make a conscious decision tonight to give my life to Jesus, surrender my heart to him. I want to belong to Jesus. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I belong to Jesus, but I want to give my life to Jesus. Raise your hand all over this building. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. How many? Hallelujah. I want to give my life to Jesus. See the hand over there. Okay. How many tonight you're saying, I'm ready to forgive and let go of the hate, let go of the anger, let go of the resentment. Tonight, I'm going to let God... Take that out of me. And then I want my heart full of God's love. I want to become a real follower of Jesus Christ. Okay? I want those two groups. If you just say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or tonight, I am ready. There's going to be a miracle that happens tonight. Your anger, their anger is going to leave. Come on. 
the depression is going to leave. The anxiety is going to leave. It's going to happen right now because God's going to fill you with His Spirit. And when you're full, everything else needs to be flushed out. Just come forward. It's going to change your life forever. I want to give my life to ask your neighbor. You want to grow up there? I'll grow up there with you. You're not going to hurt no one anymore. Come on, you're not going to hurt no one anymore with your mouth. You're not going to hurt anybody with your body. You're not going to hurt anybody with your fists. You're not going to hurt anybody no more. You're going to, you're, going to, you're going to love people. God's going to heal you. You've been trying to stop from being angry and hurting people, but it's kind of just comes out. All right. Come on, they're still coming forward. Let's give a hand. Come on. There's going to be freedom tonight. We're going to come against the spirit of Cain, the spirit of anger, the spirit of hate, the spirit of resentment, the spirit of depression. All of us leave it. The spirit of sickness and disease. If you're sick tonight, come forward too. Because this is what's going to happen. When you forgive that person, come on, that spirit of disease is going to leave you. Come on, the spirit of the devil is the spirit of disease. And God is saying, I want to I set you free. I want to heal you tonight. Some of you right now, you've gone to the doctor and they can't figure out that pain in your stomach. And God is saying, that pain in your stomach, I'm going to set you free from the spirit of pain that's been causing that pain, and it's going to happen tonight. Come on. Is there anybody ready to get set free from the spirit of pain? You're still coming. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to need some more workers up here, but how many tonight are giving your life to Jesus tonight and you're saying, I want to belong to Jesus. Raise your hand. I want to belong to Jesus. Okay, I'm giving my life to Jesus. I want to belong. Proud of you. 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 It's the biggest decision you can ever make as a person to give your life to Jesus. No one is, belongs to Jesus that has not given their life to Jesus. It's a choice. But no one, I'm going to get this, no one gives their life to Jesus that God hasn't first come to them. It's not that you came to Jesus. It's not that you love Jesus, that he loves you. He's not here to accuse you. He's not here to judge you. He's here to forgive you. And you're going to not only for, be forgiven, you're going to receive forgiveness. You're going to, this is what you're going to do. You're going to forgive yourself and you're going to forgive everybody that hurts you. I know there's some tough stuff that some of you guys have been abused when you were little kids. You have a molester you need to forgive. And I'm telling you, let, forgive the molester. Forgive the person that hurts you. And I'll tell you why. Because once you forgive them, they'll never have power over your emotions anymore. Okay? Are we ready to forgive? Some of you, your greatest enemy is yourself. And what I mean by that is, is that you keep going over and over and over the mistakes that you've made and you don't let yourself off the hook. And this is, it's a spirit of guilt, it's demonic. Jesus came for the guilty. And this is what he's saying. When I forgive you, I'm gonna give you a brand new start in your life. Your whole past is gone and you're gonna have a brand new start tonight. How many want a brand new start tonight to build a wonderful life? Okay. Let's, let's, let's pray. Let's release it. Father, I just thank you. I'm going to pray first. I'm just going to, Father, I just thank you for your spirit being here. You did not bring up this word about Cain and how we're supposed to love one another. And, and the proof that we love one another is our love for each, bro, each other. You didn't bring up the subject to hurt us. You brought up the subject to make us whole. Tonight, we're not like Cain. We don't reject your instruction. We say, God, you're right. I'll do what's right. I need you. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for hurting others because I've been hurt. I forgive everyone that has hurt me. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. 
you paid the price by dying on the cross for my sins and then you rose from the dead. You paid the price and you conquered death to give me a new life. I'm done doing it my way. I renounce the spirit of Cain, of anger, of rebellion, of hate, of revenge, of carelessness, of numbness. I let it go now. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I receive your love. Fill my heart with love, with your love. I thank you, Lord, that I'm a new person today. All my sins are washed away. I am full of your Holy Spirit. And now I can love the unlovable. Use me, Lord, to show people how much you love them. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I thank you. Amen. I'm going to pray one more thing. Father, right now, I come against every spirit of anger, division, hate, pain, sickness, misery, Father, disease, in the name of Jesus. I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that right now your spirit is here. And every spirit that's been trying to hold your people, we just thank you, Lord. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Tonight is a night of freedom in the name of Jesus. Spirit of anger, go. Spirit of depression, go. Spirit of rejection, go. Spirit of hate right now, go. In the spirit of unforgiveness, go. Spirit, every spirit of infirmity, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your work tonight. What you've done is sealed by the blood of Jesus. And I just thank you, Lord, that your people will never be the same again because they have your power to love, Father God, each other, and even love our enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. We love you. We're going to stay here tonight praying for whoever needs prayer. We got a team that will pray you through. If you need a breakthrough for anything, let's continue to pray. This is a house of prayer. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys Sunday. We're going to continue talking about...